Welcome to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey, everyone. It's Debbie Potts, and I am excited to get back into podcasting in my new home. And obviously, the sound needs to be improved because I still haven't had time to, or I've had time, I haven't figured out how to decorate my room and make it more soundproof for uh, podcasting. So I should be in the closet, but I'm not. I am excited to get back on track and start doing Wellness Wednesday short podcast for you and on Fridays do a little Fitness Friday. So once I get a little more organized, we will do that. But today I have Reed Davis on the show. Let's bring him on. Hey everyone, I've got Reed Davis, the founder of FDN, a functional diagnostic nutrition program. As I am an FDN practitioner now and focusing on my health coaching with FDN is my new journey. So I'm excited to talk to Reed today about the Dress for Health Success protocol and what is nutrition and what to eat and all this stuff everyone should be working on right now. So thanks Reed for coming out on the show via our Zoom call today. Always a pleasure and congratulations on being an FDN graduate and for doing some good work in the world. Yes, just move two wards closer to you. I'm in my new location looking out to Elfin Forest and Lake Hodges is my backyard down the hill. So I'm excited to have this new atmosphere and be able to work online as an FDM practitioner and start my new journey as focus on a health coach to make an impact. It's fantastic. It's a good area there. Um, I'm, I think I'm only about 20 miles from you down in Southern California where everything's wonderful except for the dust in the air from the fires. It's, have yeah. you noticed the sunsets they're like they start at two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm blessed we have the sunrise on our hilltop here and i watch the sunset here each night but i could actually see the sun a little bit more last night so it's better than the people in the northwest who have a lot more yeah so today i want to talk oh, about let's dive into nutrition and First, maybe just talk about what is Dress Health Success program or protocol we help figure out for clients individually, but the big part of Dress is the D word, diet, but talk about what Dress is and how you came up with it. Okay, sure. Well, Dress, the Dress for Health Success program was developed over a 10 year period and continues to be refined, but it's the protocols for what ails you. It's really step two in the overall FDN you know, system or methodology. So step one would be investigating, you know, running the labs and finding out what are the healing opportunities, you know, with what's out of balance in hormones, immune, digestion, detoxification. So we, we really look at what's wrong first, you know, what needs improvement, what, what's out of balance or dysfunctional. Uh, sometimes these things are way upstream from whatever is really bothering a person. So we do a good job of investigating first, but once we know what the healing opportunities are, you know, we're not diagnosing anything medical. Uh, you know, we're not gonna come up with a treatment plan for that one thing. We're gonna come up with a holistic lifestyle and epigenetic program that covers everything, that covers every cell, tissue, organ, and system. Now that is the backyard of a health counselor, health coach, uh, you know, and anyone can do it. And so step one is the investigation, but step two, putting together a personalized dress for health success program. And step three would be run the program. You know, someone has to actually do the work and make some habit changes and things. But step two, the dress for health success program, the D-R-E-S-S -S stands for diet. Obviously it has to be a corrective diet, rest, corrective rest program, exercise, stress reduction and supplementation. So DRESS makes it easy to remember. Some people love the acronyms because they don't have to think. It's, mm -hmm. it, and almost everything you do 
lifestyle wise is going to fit into one of those categories if it's diet it's anything you're eating or, or drinking you know uh your your rest it's your sleep time and other rest you might get being restful uh you you don't have to be totally asleep to get rest but um we know the best rest comes from very deep sleep so diet rest and then exercise of course you know you can't get healthy if you're not uh exercising they say sitting is the new smoking because we sit so much mm -hmm. uh so i have a desk that goes up and down you know right now i'm sitting but so diet rest exercise and maybe one of the biggest categories other than diet is uh the stress reduction because stress is so ubiquitous it comes in so many forms we've got um even your diet can be stressful you know foods that you're sensitive to but the environment is very toxic and uh, prior to being in this field, you know, over 20 years ago, I switched, but I was in the environmental law field, saving the planet, air, birds, water, trees, bees, you know, and they're all getting sick and dying. Uh, and I thought, well, gee, what's it doing to people? That's when I switched careers and started investigating what's really wrong with people. And over a long period of time, developed this stress for health success system. So diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, comes in all kinds of forms and the, and and then the supplementation because food just isn't good enough quality it doesn't have the same amount of nutrients that we really need but also um, you can do things with supplements people can self-treat they can uh, stimulate they can support sy systems like digestion for instance or the immune system uh, and and as I said sort of substitute for what's missing from food so it's a very holistic epigenetic program it covers everything it's not doctoring it's not medicine it's not uh, treating anything specific it's treating the entire being the entire organism every cell tissue organ and system can be improved you know and you can you can do better mm -hmm. and it's anti-aging it's all about uh, getting well and then living long healthy happy life yeah <laughs> that is important part is thriving each day and improving our vitality especially this past year 2020 has been a year of chaos <laughs> and different lifestyle habits for people and I think it's a great opportunity for people to really work on their health. And as I keep saying each day, get healthy and optimize your health from the inside out by running functional lab tests as we do and investigate the whole person for those external stressors, but really find out those internal hidden stressors as we talked a little bit about as a first step in our investigation. But nutrition is a big one people can work on now and it's confusing for people so what's kind of your philosophy and what we talk about in fdn is is how do we figure out what to eat what's good for us yeah well you know i've, I've been referring people to uh mtdiet.com as a way to go get a little test that tells you what your basic metabolic type is mm -hmm. and that would make you uh you fall into certain categories and broadly speaking there would be protein types and there are carb types and that would be based on being a fast oxidizer or being a slow oxidizer for the carbs so if you're a fast oxidizer like i am this is actually the rate at which you burn fuel that's a very important piece of data are you a fast oxidizer and you know there's always somewhere on the dial that you are you know some are faster than others but fast oxidizers need to burn slow burning fuel so if you have a bonfire it's a fast oxidizer you're like you you can really burn up the fuel man genetically speaking it's the way you're made and so you got to put the big logs on it the proteins and fats burn more slowly and they will fuel you better and when i say fuel what what's the purpose of that well it's to produce energy you know you're made of food and you burn food or fuel to uh, create energy in each cell and uh, cells don't have to be taught what their job is they just need to produce energy to do it at the right rate quality and quantity now, this is what i learned from bill wolcott william wolcott is the author of the metabolic typing diet and it's still my go-to book i mean i read it 20 years ago and i still go to that it's still my main source of information 
for basic dietary recommendations and, and choices and, and uh, principles. So this idea of fast and slow oxidizer is very important. Good example would be uh, you take a really fast oxidizer, like, and there are certain sort of um, geographical areas and, and the people who uh, have been there for millennia uh, that, that are good examples of this. So take your average Eskimo, they're very fast oxidizers. And so they need a lot of slow burning fuel. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the fat. They, they can burn fuel and have energy from now on all, all over. And some protein. And not that much carbs. Matter of fact, if you take uh, a North American native, uh, basically fast oxidizer, and a lot of uh, Europeans, especially the uh, Western Europeans, people like that, they just, they just really are good solid fast oxidizers and so they need a lot of protein fat. If you give them carbohydrates instead they get sick. Uh, they, they have a propensity for diabetes for instance. If you, if you get you know carbohydrates are very fast burning fuel. So that's like putting a, a piece of paper on a bonfire. Poof it's gone and then you have no energy. On a cellular level you're, you're not able to uh, survive that way, uh, you're, you're going to get issues, you're going to get problems. And that's been proven, you know, a million times by a million people who have followed the metabolic typing diet and found, wow, this really works. And um, it took me a long time to figure that out and to <laughs> finally find that system. But it really, it really answered a lot of prayers and uh, questions and it's yeah. still my go-to thing. So people, you know, should they be wanting to burn fat as a primary fuel and carbohydrates as their backup fuel tank? Is some people, you know, is that our main goal is to burn fat? Well, there, there's this, let's, let's start with the idea of there are macronutrient ratios that would work for you as an individual. And you can dial that in by just paying attention to the ratios. Protein and fat usually will come together. Um, some people can handle, handle a little higher fat in their meat. Um, they can they want the higher purine type um, meats for their you know protein fat, and uh, um, then they need carbs too. So you know high quality complex carbs, not processed refined carbs like basically you know cookies are not good for you. And ice cream is not good for you. It's too high in sugar. Uh, we just, we, as a fast oxidizer now, it's, it's not going to work so well for you. You won't produce energy the right rate, quality, or quantity. So that's a good place to start with the ratios. And you can figure them out. Again, there's a test online you can take that will give you the general starting point. And then you can, through observation, eat that way and, and sort of mod modify the amount of protein and fat on your plate. Just by the way it looks on your plate, you don't have to measure calories or count carbs or any of these things. Um, no, no counting calories. You just, just eat according to the uh, the pie chart on your plate of those three uh, elements, the macronutrients. Now, then, the, the, another answer to your question, obviously, is well, which which carbs, which proteins, and which fats? If you get the ratios right, and something's still not quite right. Like you feel better, you feel more energy, you're sleeping better, you lose a few pounds, you know, and what have you, uh, but you want to tweak it some more. It's, well, which ones are, work best for your genetic um, potential, you know, to, that are going to maximize your genetic potential? And so that's where the varieties come in. Um, you know, if you're a really fast, high purine type fast oxidizer, you're going to want to eat organ meats, fatty fish. You know um, the the dark meat, um, and, and you know it's funny when you talk to it. Just and then I'll I'll, I'll be ready for the next question, but um, or to go deeper into it. But when like I found out when I found this out, and I always liked white meat. I just thought white meat was cool, and I'll just eat the white meat on a chicken. You know, because it's kind of pure or something. I I don't know. I just it, it, you know it tasted pretty good. And I'd have to put a lot of salt on it though. Uh, but I loved it, you know, but then when I read this book and I started figuring I'm a fast oxidizer 
and by the way, parasympathetic dominant. I started eating the drumsticks and they feel me so much better. I don't need to put any salt on it. I just, it just tastes good. It's a little fattier, it's a little richer. You got the skin on there, you know, plus it's nice and crispy and, and it just fuels you. The dark meat with a little bit more fat, which you find on the, on the thighs and, and wings and, and these things, you know, it just feels you so much better if you're a real fast oxidizer. You feel more energy. You feel more satiated and you feel um a sense of well-being from it actually makes you feel good you know when you're paying attention and when you're healthy enough to be able to make those observations well that's why i love using the, the metabolic typing diet form with people but then dive in a little deeper of how to adjust it based on that diet chat record sheet that we give to clients because it is like, okay, how do you feel? Do you need to make those adjustments? How's your energy level? How's your gut feel? And, you know, do you get done eating and you're tired? Or how's your energy for the next two, three hours? So it gives you that feedback. Because I find a lot of people don't know how they feel and they don't really ever pay attention to like, oh, you know, I kind of actually feel sluggish after I eat every time or I feel bloated or I, you know, just don't feel really happy afterwards or have a headache. People don't really correlate that all together. Yeah, Debbie, you, you know that when you feel crappy all the time, it starts <laughs> to be normal. Yeah, sadly. You know, like, and people think that headaches and sinuses and allergies and moodiness and irritability and poor sleep and headaches, they, I mean, they think all this stuff's normal after a while. Well, it's normal for me. I, I've always been like this, and my mother was like this too. You know, and these sort of uh, false reasoning. So we're designed to feel really good. Maybe not like a five-year-old. You're not going to get up and jump up and down in the bed every morning like whoopee. But you know, you should feel pretty happy and um, shouldn't have any bad moods unless you have a real reason uh, to, which is possible. I get moody, but usually it's because someone. <laughs> has made me yeah. <laughs> you know like i'm just i'm normally very happy uh i've always been happy go lucky you know but but um fuel the fuel you put in your body really can make a difference you can you can hang on to it so if you're one of those people who's just been sick for a long time um and you've sort of accepted it as the way it's going to take you longer to start to realize what good feels like you know, yeah. when when energy returns, when clear thinking, you know, you get rid of the fogginess and wondering all the time. You start to be able to focus better and accomplish tasks easier and your memory improves and your again, your sleep, your sex life. I mean, you name it, your workouts get get more intense if mm -hmm. you want to. And these kind of things. So it it's really amazing what happens when you just fuel the body properly for long enough so that some of this uh, damage that's been done and, and bad habits that can, can be uh, overcome and you get stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always say that when I'm writing blogs is, you know, people think that this is their new normal and they blame the aging process and don't realize you could be feeling better and live life to the fullest rather than just like, oh, that's how it is now. You know, that's the way I, my body works. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I once had a pain in my left knee and I w went to someone and said, you know, I got this pain in my left knee. He says, oh, you're getting older. I go, well, my right knee is the same age as my left knee. You know, so, oh, that's a good so point. you know, which, yeah. So, so um, it, you can't just blame it on age. Look, age, age changes you. You, you definitely, um, you know, uh, they say one should sort of grace of, gracefully give up some of the things of youth. Like I can't party like I used to. I don't. I think I don't want to. I feel so much. But you know, I, I can't handle that two, three nights in a row stuff anymore. But I'm I'm better off not doing it. And uh, so there's some things you sort of gracefully like leave the party early. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, you're doing all the things you want to do that really make you happy. Mm -hmm. you know the some of the things i mentioned yeah and uh, for me it's just getting up and having a good sense of well-being and, and clarity about my purpose and uh physically if i'm not in pain uh, you know like from injuries because i was such an active athletic person you know there's nothing i haven't tried 
I've got one thing for you not to try. Don't try that cordless bungee jumping. You know, that's, <laughs> that's no good. But everything else, yeah, I've tried everything. You name it. Yeah. But and, uh, you know, well-worn body. But that's why I think it's so important to work on nutrition for athletes is because, you know, everyone's listening to what someone else is doing or reads this program and it's so N equals one. And as metabolic typing looks, it's more genetic. So a lot of, you know, when people do the MT diet quiz, it asks a lot of different questions, but it gives information about slow and fast oxidizer, but explain, we can go in that a little deeper and then it tells you a parasympathetic versus sympathetic. Could we kind of dive into a little bit more into those? Yeah, sure. So a, a basic understanding that Bill Wolcott, who's the world's leading authority on metabolic typing would, would um, approve of, you know, cause I, I try to break it down and make it simpler. Yeah. Um, if, if, the, the, if you get your energy and uh, sense of satiation, and even your sense of well-being from the carb fat protein ratios you really can dial that in you just you just play with it and we have those diet check record sheets you mentioned that bill developed and um but then there's also the distribution of that energy so that's we say mostly uh covered by the autonomic nervous system you have your sympathetic which is the fight flight, you know, that's when you need the extra energy, you got to run away, you got to fight, you know, and we find ourselves in that mode a lot if we don't have, um, you know, control over it because you, you, you know, it's very easy to get pissed off these days, uh, you know, especially if you're out in traffic and you have a job and you have relationships and you have money and you have all these different mental emotional things, you can get very sympathetic dominant. So that's more like the distribution of energy. You're producing more uh, cortisol, more adrenaline. You're, that can shut down your immune system. It can raise your blood sugar. You know, so, so you know, it's the distribution of the energy, what's going on in your body, um, besides just fueling it for, you know, and and besides just for fuel. So I I would repeat that the carb fat protein ratio is the most important thing with regard to being satiated and producing energy. But man, the distribution of it, you, you want to strengthen the weaker side. Now, I just happen to be, remember I said I've been, I've been happy-go-lucky my whole life, and it's because I'm more parasympathetic dominant. I just generally lean to rest and digest versus fight and flight. Now, th that's where this maybe the, 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 the carb or uh, the, pro the macronutrient ratios are very important to balancing your nervous system. And so are the types of foods, which ones? Because you don't want to eat the foods. If you're already sympathetic dominant, you're in fight flight, you're one of those people with anxiety and you know, you're just kind of the nervous type. Um, us parasympathetics, <laughs> we sort of look at that and go, hey. <laughs> You know, and, and, you know, that person needs to strengthen their parasympathetic side. And food counts towards that. Food and supplements is, it can count towards that. Breathing, you know, lots of things. But at the same time, I'll say that the parasympathetic dominance, like myself, if we don't strengthen both sides, you know, keep it in balance, we get overly rest and digest. Like, you just want to rest. Like, all the, you're happy just sort of sitting, you know. Like, uh, even when I was 10, I would just go, we had a long driveway and I would go down and sit on the fence at the end of the day and just sit there. And I just like to sit there and just watch and look and I would dream up things and I'd think of stuff and, and, and that, and my mom would sometimes say, why don't you do something? You know, like you're just sitting there. <laughs> I said, but mom, you know, I like to just sit here and think and isn't thinking doing something. I mean, thinking is doing something, isn't it? And she'd go, yeah, whatever, you know, like I wasn't in trouble. So, <laughs> but so I can be, you can be overly parasympathetic and you can be overly sympathetic and, and food can really help with that too. So get the macronutrient right. And then what we do for select, uh, well, which ones, one of the first things you probably want to do is a test for food sensitivities. You know, like I really believe in doing the MT test and then also the MRT test, you know, like we look for what's um, irritating you because there, when you're irritated by food, when it's causing inflammation and other reactions in the body, 
um, it, it stimulates the sympathetic. You get, you get off. And if you have inflammation, you could have pain. If you have inflammation and pain, and next thing you know, you've got gut problems, you know, and you're getting a dysbiosis, and it, it just goes on and on and on. There's a cascade. We call it the metabolic chaos cascade. So, um, you know, it starts with that diet and goes from there. Uh -huh. So people need to look at their slower fast oxidizer and then how that relates to if they're a sympathetic, parasympathetic. So you could be a fast oxidizer and a sympathetic person, then you need to tweak. What would you adjust then having more protein to fat to carbs? You know, how do you adjust if you're a fast oxidizer and a sympathetic, then how do you adjust if you're a slow oxidizer and uh, you know, which parasympathetic, yeah. you know, well, the, the classic, it's a really good question. Um, the classic types are, fast oxidizer and parasympathetic dominant. Again, if I could go back to the Eskimo, and I, I, I'm not, you know, um, just saying, I'm not using race as a basis. I'm saying genetic types. They're genetic types. And there's, uh, uh, they just, you know, there's groups. Um, I'm a certain genetic type. I'm never going to play professional basketball, for instance. You know, like I just, uh, not going to happen. So the, some of these genetic types, like Eskimos, they're they're and they, and they represent a classic fast oxidizer. They need slow burning fuel, like a lot of fat, not that much carbs. You know, they need the vitamins and minerals and trace elements and uh, phytonutrients and uh, antioxidants and things that that come with all these things together. But um, they they need that slow burning fuel, and they're also parasympathetic dominant. Like their nervous systems are just more rest and digest. And they're not really the nervous types for the most part. Um, I know I'm generalizing a lot, but if you look at the science, this is very true. Um, and it's partly because they're not um, going to get snuck up on very easily. You know, they, they, they see very long distances. They go out onto the, um, you know, glaciers and ice packs and ice flows and, I'm just talking about your your traditional um, ancient lifestyle for most of these people, and um, and you know they're just laid back and they like to hunt and fish, and then go back and and party, you know, like eat and um, have a good time and socialize, and and they're not really worried about anyone sneaking up on them. They're not a warrior tribe at all. There's no warrior tribes. Um, doesn't mean they won't fight you if you attack them. Uh, but it, it, you, you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Whereas you take you take your classic slow oxidizer, sympathetic dominant. These would be more maybe your South American um, people who've lived in the jungle for uh, 500 generations. And they're very nervous because a lot of things in that jungle can eat you. <laughs> and not, including warrior tribes. This is where warrior tribes come from. They're, they're very sympathetic dominant. And um, they're very slow oxidizers. They eat, they eat and do very well on veg vegetables, like things that grow on trees or they pull up out of the ground. With the occasional, um, there's no whales to hunt, you know, no big um, herds of buffalo and um, things like that. They eat a lot of, so they're slower oxidizers. And it fuels them just fine. A slow oxidizer, you, if you have a small fire, um, this oxidative rate, then you can put fast burning fuel on it and keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And it works uh, classically with this, with the sympathetic nervous system. You know, you keep it going. You're always looking around. Um, I read a story once about the classic slow oxidizer sympathetic dominance where these, um, actually a tribe of people who lived in the jungle and had never been out of it and never seen more than like 20 feet in front of them before. Wow. Like they've never been on a football field and even because they just never been out. And when they got out onto the plains, they had vision problems. They, they saw uh, like herds of antelope and it, they didn't know if it was ants really close, like some little animal or the, the idea of perspective and it being really far away was um, an issue. And so I, I know I'm using a lot of generalities and some people might not like that 
Um, but I'm using them just to create a model for you to understand the thing. Not saying we're, we're all, you know, universally um, the same, you know, spiritually and, and uh, these kind of things. But, um, and, you know, I think those are scientific facts that when you observe them and be open to them, can help guide you. Mm -hmm. It can help guide you. Yeah. Well, I think it's great analogies. And, and we always like to look at where your ancestries are from. And like, I'm more, if you go to your 23andMe report, you can see I am Northern European, 65%, 68%. And then you can figure out a little bit too what that indication towards your metabolic typing diet of what my body does well eating more. But then there's other people I know, and there's always questions that people are vegetarian or pescatarian. And if it's by choice or what they actually feel better being vegetarian, is that kind of what you're saying? If you're from South Africa, you didn't ever really have animal meat as much as vegetables or wherever you're from. And, and then maybe those people are more the slow oxidizers, but it seems like you know some people are vegetarian and they feel good for me i i feel better having a higher protein diet kind of have to make myself go to eat more animal meat because i know i feel better if i do that even though it's i'm used to always eat only vegetables so i think that's it so the individual yeah. approach too you know it goes it goes even deeper than that debbie as you well know um that it has to do with the nutrients that were available geographically and mm -hmm. and according to the climate where your ancient ancestors came from so and i'm i'm the same thing i'm celtic you know uh yeah. like almost 100 percent. although on one genetic test i did said i was two percent neanderthal which which everyone says well that explains you really, like perfectly <laughs> <laughs> and so um yeah, you just, you know, you have your genetics and they don't change. You will never change your genetics. You can change the expression of those genes. That's the whole goal. That's the whole re uh, idea behind dress for health success. It is an epigenetic, meaning like gene influencing program. You can influence the expression of those genes to um, keep you healthy and happy and old and wise and hopefully... Uh, doing some good work in the world like you are, right? <laughs> trying, yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to create. You know, wanted you to talk about nu the nutrition part because I think right now our my goal is to help create awareness of how we need to get healthy and take ownership for our health and invest in our health. And meeting with FDA and practitioners really, I think essential and crucial time of our world to be doing right now, people are able to, but at least we can give them Here's free information, you know, work on your nutrition, when you're eating, how you're eating, you know, sitting down, chewing your food and simple things. But really, I just think it's so important to people to get the whole full investigation as I've been looking at a lot of GI map labs and I haven't seen anyone with a, without having a low secretary IGA. So all these people with low immune function when we should be like, okay, what can I do to get my immune system so strong as possible so I can fight off viruses and be healthy and thrive each day as we someday return to our no normal. But yeah, I just think it's FDN work. What we're doing is should just be filled with people every day. It's amazing. Yeah, because FDN is not about one condition. Yeah. Like you mentioned, the immune system, that's one piece of the puzzle. The hormones also have to be balanced. Uh, the immune system has to be balanced. The digestive system has to be balanced. Your microbiome, since you mentioned the lab, has to be balanced. Uh, your detoxification systems have to be balanced. Uh, there's, there's elements within the, the bloodstream. There are certain minerals that have to be balanced, or if you're out of balance, you're going to be sick. So it is all about balance and resiliency if you want to be an athlete until you're old i mean i'm a lot closer to 70 than i am to 60. and uh my son was down with his boat a couple weeks ago we went out and i learned to wake surf like i was never a great surfer but i like the water and you know, man i just had so much fun i've wakeboarded before but wake surfing is a new challenge and and he everyone's on the boat i'm not bragging i'm just saying they're like wow your dad's really in good shape jason he, he you know he got right up 
and was playing with the wave and, and stuff. And so you can do, I expect to do that till I'm, I don't know how old, you know, 90. My mom's 90. She's still feisty. And I have uh, other relatives that live to be 100, 98, 96. So um, I think, you know, that it's genetics is a good thing. Uh, but don't be too tied to them because it's epigenetic. You can express and live your longest, healthiest life as an athlete, or at least being active. I don't think there's anything worse than, than I. if someone said, well, you're not going to be active, I would not be a happy man. Yeah. Well, that's what I keep trying to tell athletes on the show and focus on more. What do you want to be doing 20, 30 years from now? How do you want to be living your life? Instead of focus on the race season for a uh, athlete that's you know competitive but what are you doing now that's impacting your aging process your longevity so when you are 60 70 80 years old how do you want to be living <laughs> how do you want to feel <laughs> important well uh i know that you know this is not a long uh podcast or anything like that, but i have to say this that for those interested in being in really good shape and being much older you, you gotta not look at it as if there's some curve like this where well like remember 50 was like the top of the hill and then you're over the hill mm -hmm. that's bull you know <laughs> that's the old paradigm of looking at there's no like oh i'm 50 now i'm over the hill i gotta slow down i can't go w learn to wake surf you know and things like that take take down the the double di double black diamond uh hills in the in the winter and stuff um you you really can stay 40. The goal would be to stay 40, a really good, healthy, until you're about 80. And like, in other words, sort of not age for 40 years. Like, you're going to age until you're 40. Just It's just the nature of things. But you can try to maintain that for as long as possible. So if at 80, you're doing what you did at 40, uh, you're in damn good shape. <laughs> Yeah, and I see that a lot down here in Southern California. There's a lot of people when I'm down by the beach and you see all the people biking and they're they're older. It's great to see. And then it's people surfing it at older ages. It's, it is really nice to see all ages out there being active and yeah. healthy. <laughs> I know there's in Southern California, it's full of uh, uh, old bearded, you know, like surfer dudes, you know, and yeah. they're, in, they're in shape, you know, I mean, so thank you very much. Do, yeah. Do you well, have any other you. questions? That is all for today. I just wanted to focus on one thing is talk about, you know, the D of the dress protocol, and then we'll put everything in the show notes about metabolic typing. I just want to dive into that this episode. And if people are interested in becoming an FDM practitioner themselves and really help people build their health up from inside out and we'll you know, all what we do, we'll put that in the link too. Cause I think it's an important thing is people are working online now and people need to get healthy and we need more of us out there. Fantastic, Debbie, you're doing a wonderful job. Very proud of you. And I'm happy to come on your show anytime and uh, support you in what you're doing. And okay. uh, I think if people want to learn more about this, they should just hire you and, and walk the talk. Yep. You know, because I know you're doing it. You and your husband are doing great there. So thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.